Hello, and welcome to this overview of Enterprise Manager Cloud Control. Our composite application allows you to get a broader view across a multi-domain application, possibly made up of SOA components, portal components, and application components. So now we take a look at it's the actual status region. We have 69 different members, different types associated with each of these. We have JVMs. We have WebLogic servers, as well as some application and SOA components. All have different statuses associated with them. Below that, we have the heap usage percentage, a customized region that I went ahead and created, showing both SOA Server 1 and Server 1, and the actual heap memory associated with it. If we mouse over one of these, we can see the, the critical and the warning thresholds associated with our servers as well. Looking at other regions within our composite application, we can see the incident region beneath that that would show the different critical and different policy violations associated with the different members within our composite application. We also basically have a service level agreement status where we can see service levels. In this case, we can see basically that we have some downtime associated with this particular service that's been breached. Above that, we have different services that can be shown. In this case, no services are actually down, but we can see the different server statuses. If we go ahead and show all the services, we can get a, a state of all the different services running with a composite application, how long they've been up, the overall health of those services. And above that, we have two critical regions showing different performance metrics and diagnostics associated with it. The one on the bottom shows the active sessions and the pending requests associated with the servers. We can see for server one, the pending requests have been getting pretty high. We see them roughly around going above 10. So we're actually getting a violation associated with those. Above that, we can see something even more alarming. We can see that there's database locks associated with one of our servers. So with that, let's go ahead and actually drill down into that particular problem and see what's going on with the actual threads in server one. By clicking on server one, we can actually drill down into the JVM associated with this particular member. Now, if we go ahead and look at this, we can see a variety of different states. The first is we can see the CPU utilization, the heap utilization, the garbage collection, all look fairly normal for this particular JVM. Beneath that, we have thread state. We also have the top request, so we can see one request in particular is add item JSP associated with the shopping cart application is being impacted. We can see the method calls associated with those. We see the lock status of SQL that's being, that we're trying to call. And we can see the actual state of the database as well. This is the top database from a standpoint of this particular JVM. If we had multiple JVMs, we'd probably have multiple databases listed here. We can also see the state of that database right above it, the table lock contention in this case, which is certainly a red flag associated with this particular JVM. In addition, if we want to see the relationships associated with this particular JVM, we can easily go ahead and just click and look at the navigation tree where we can see the application deployments, so what components, the web logic domains, and other different services associated with this particular JVM in the group of JVMs, which represent in this case the web logic domain that this JVM is a part of. So let's go ahead and actually analyze the thread state. If we go to the top here, we can see the thread states mostly in a database lock, which indicates that we probably need to go ahead and actually drill deeper into that. We have a couple different options. The best option in this case is probably to go ahead and drill into the live threads, but we do have the option also to go ahead and compare time periods if we want to. So let's go ahead and click on live thread analysis to drill deeper. Live thread analysis gives us a live visibility into all the different relationships associated basically with the threads within the JVM itself. Looking at the threads, we can see a lot are associated with our add item JSP. You can also see a variety are also associated with the soft reserve method call that we saw on the previous screen. Now below that we have a lot of different details associated with the different threads. We're highlighted the first thread at the moment, so we're looking at that particular one. We can see what's holding the lock. We can see the SQL that's basically waiting on the SQL hash as well as the SQL ID. And we can also see the thread state, in this case a database wait. By clicking on that, we can take ourselves directly into the database session associated with this particular thread. Now the database session is going to give us a lot more information about what's going on in the underlying database. In this case, we knew there was thread lock contention before. We knew there was table lock contention, and we can see that represented here in the wait state associated with this actual SQL session. In addition, we have a couple of different pieces of visibility. We can see the user, the database user associated with it. We can see basically the lock command. We could go ahead and execute the SQL again if we wanted to, but we can also see the SQL session that's actually blocking this one which is outside the application. 
Clicking on that will bring us into that SQL session, allowing us to get visibility into the root cause. In this case, another SQL statement kicked off basically outside the application by SQLnet from the SQLnet client that's going ahead and blocking this, which is likely a PL SQL statement or some kind of maintenance routine that's actually going ahead and blocking this up. We do have the capability at this point, if we wanted to, to actually kill the session cleaning this up and getting our application basically back up and running. With that, I'd like to go ahead and wrap up the demo and thank you once again for watching this overview of Oracle Enterprise Manager Cloud Control.